Um, the first problem you guys asked me to do is number 27. That's the lowest number, so we'll do that first. So number 27 says determine the equation on the parabola in standard form given the vertex at negative 2, 5 and a solution point at negative 3, 2. So we know the vertex is at negative 2, comma, 5. And the solution point is at negative 3, comma, 2. Vertex. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, the first thing we need to do is plot our information. Whenever they're asking us to write the equation, the first thing we want to make sure we do is plot our information that we're given. So this says this one is a vertex at 2 comma, or negative 2, 5. So I go over negative 2 and then 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right. Then it says it goes through the point negative 2, 5. I'm sorry. Negative negative 3, 2. Negative 3, up 2. 1, 2. OK? Um, and, and I'm sorry, this one has a, make sure that it also says it has a vertical axis of symmetry. I forgot to add. And so it has a vertical axis symmetry. So if we know it goes through this vertex, right? And if it has a vertical axis symmetry, that means, remember, the axis symmetry has to go through the um, vertex, right? So that's your line of symmetry, has to go through your vertex. So now, if we have a graph that goes through this point, Right? Is the graph going to open up or open down? down. It's going to open down. And therefore, when we know when a graph opens up and opens down, I don't know if that's a point yet. But if we know if the graph opens up and down, therefore, what has to be squared, the x or the y? X, x squared, right? That's a 4. So therefore, we can write the equation x minus h squared equals 4p times y minus k. Remember that was our formula for a parabola? It's also written over there in our formula section. So now we know what the vertex is. So remember the vertex is negative 2, 5. Well, that represents our h and our k. And remember, any given point, remember if an equation represents all the points on a parabola. Well, if we're given one point, we can represent that as our x and our y. But to write the equation, we need to figure out what p is. So let's plug in the information that we're given. We know x is negative 2 minus our h, which is negative 2, squared equals 4p, our h. What am I, I don't know why I keep on writing this wrong. Our point is negative 3, right? Negative 3, 2. Yeah, I just didn't rewrite it. So x is negative 3 minus negative 2. Right, because it's minus your h squared equals 4p times our y, which is 2, minus k, which is 5. So now let's go and simplify this. Negative 3, that becomes a double negative. Right? Minus a negative is positive 2. Negative 3 plus positive 2 is negative 1 squared equals 4p. And this becomes minus 3. So therefore, now we can square this, which becomes a positive 1, equals negative 12p divided by negative 12. Therefore, we get p equals a negative 1 12. Yes? OK. So now let's plug that back into our equation. Now that we know what p is, now let's plug it back into our equation for any point x and y. So. Therefore, we write x minus h squared equals 4p times y minus x, k. Now, we don't want to solve for x and y. We want to leave that because that's going to be part of our equation. So we have x minus negative h, which would be minus a negative 2, squared 
equals 4, but now we know what p is, which is a negative 1 12th, times y minus k, which is minus 5. So now I can simplify this to minus a negative 2, which will be x plus 2 squared equals a negative 1 third times y minus 5. And there you go. Now, on your EOC, they might ask, they might say, well, what is the equation in you know, solve for y? So therefore, you'd have to multiply that out and then um, get y. Right, and get y by itself. So the equation might not give you the answer in this format. They might have you multiply this out, which would be x squared plus um, 4x plus 4 equals negative 1 third y uh, plus 5 thirds. And then you'd have to subtract 5 thirds. So you'd have x squared plus 4x. Um, so 4 minus 5 over 3. That means I need to multiply this by 3 over 3. So that equals 12 over 3 minus 5 over 3, which equals 7 over 3, right? Yes, yes, OK. Plus 7 thirds equals a negative 1 third y. And then you'd multiply by a negative 3 on both sides. So your final answer you could write as negative 3 times x squared. Or actually, we'd write, let's write that out. So you could also write this as negative 3x. What am I doing? Why am I solving for all those? I'm solving for y for some reason. Yeah, you would. But yeah, what am I? Yeah, I was right. I'm losing my brain. Yes, you'd multiply by negative 3. I was right. I'm just like losing my brain. So therefore, your final answer would be negative 3x squared minus 12x minus 7 equals y. OK? So both of these are going to be written in it. But you know, you're, you'll see they might give you the answer in that format. So you just need to make sure you can know, oh, if I get to this point, I might need to rewrite it in this form. OK? That's it. So...